Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Education Spotlight. I'm here with one of our Venice Symphony teaching artists. This is Mrs. Judy Glover. Judy, how are you today? I'm great, Tim. How are you? I'm doing well. It's a hot one at the beach here today at the Venice Symphony Beach House. I, I, gotta, I forget how much you sweat in August in Florida, but it's, it's worth it. I see that. Yeah, well, it look like a beautiful day there that you're enjoying, too. A wonderful day. I mean, as we get ready to go back into the classrooms, at least we get a chance to be at the beach a little bit. Um, Judy's one of our teaching artists that goes out into the schools, works with our symphony in the schools program, works at our summer camp. And unfortunately, this, this spring and fall, those things didn't happen like normal. What, what have you been up to? Have you been able to still do some teaching and some playing during this quarantine? Yeah, so I've probably lost half of my students. They were a little bit concerned about, you know, being out and about. Um, and the other half of my students are homeschooled. So I talked to them and because um, everything started back in March. So I talked to them and they were homeschooling. They weren't out in the environment. And I said, well, I'm feeling good. If you're feeling good, we'll just monitor how we are. Um, they, they come to my house for piano lessons. So we did masks at first and we started to feel more comfortable because we're really not going anywhere. I mean, no one was really going anywhere. So I maintained doing that. And really, I, I lost a lot of work. I mean, all the symphony concerts and everything, all the education, everything was gone. So I've just been practicing. I mean, there was really nothing else to do. So practicing, riding my bike, and reading a lot. So it's kind of making up for some lost time. And then my husband and I were watching movies, and of course, we lost sports, which is big. So we just watched movies and Netflix and everything to pass the time. So we've managed. It's been great. It's been all right. Now, with all these different quarantine things and coronavirus things, is there any tips for how we, how do you keep a piano safe? Do you wipe it down the same way you would uh, with a countertop? How, how do you keep it clean? Yes, the Lysol, the Clorox wipes, that all works. And with the students that I did keep, they would be different days or separated by two hours or something like that. So somebody would come at 10 o'clock, wipe everything down, spray everything. The next student might be 11 or 11.30. And we were just very, very careful. But as long, if I could, I would teach Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and have like two a day. And that was it. So we stayed as safe as we could. Now, those students obviously are looking up to you and trying to become, you know, someday somebody like you. When did you, how did you get your start in piano? When did you begin that journey? Well, I was nine years old. And my cousin's wife actually was teaching me at first. So she introduced me and got me going. And um, that lasted for probably for a couple of years. And she said, eh, I think I'm going to pass you on to someone else so you can go a little bit further. So then I switched to another local teacher and she was great. She's the one that really let me branch out into different types of music. Like, of course, we did all the classical stuff. And uh, she said, you pick something. I'm going to teach you classical and technique and scales. You bring something, pop, anything you want. So I would bring a pop book, a jazz book. She loved it. I was doing an Earth, Wind & Fire song for my piano recital along with the Beethoven. So she let me do both. And so that kind of started when I was 12 years old. And I just continued along that path of a little bit of this, a little of this, and a little bit of that. That's wonderful. It, it reminds me a lot of what's going on with the, with the Venice Symphony, where you can have Queen and Beethoven together. You had Earth, Wind & Fire and Beethoven. And... And they're all, it's all music, isn't it? I know, I know, I love it. And the thing with the orchestra for me is the orchestra for piano is not huge. You know, Beethoven Symphony, Mahler, there's no piano. But there is a repertoire for, um, you know, some of the current things, like some movie music that we've been doing, and John Williams. Um, and then the other thing is the celeste, which is awesome that we have one. So I really get to participate in probably 90% of the concerts, which is really great. I'm lucky. Now, the chalas, that's one of those instruments that people, when you say the name, they don't know it, but when they hear it, they know that sound. What, what makes this unique sound that we hear that makes up the chalas? Um, I think it's the very, very high register, and it's the, the timbre, the sound too, the, the pitch of it. Um, it you, you know, a lot of people have heard it in, say, Harry Potter in the movies, where you can really hear that high ringing bell type sound. So it's really unique, and I really have never played a real one before. I've played like a synthesized sound one. Uh, the real one is awesome. I mean, it's just, it's a great instrument. You just don't find it around that much. Tell us about your, your new gig that you've been doing. 
Yes, well, I had started um, June 2019 as a sub pianist at the uh, Grand Floridian. They have a society orchestra, which is a six piece band. It's a piano based drum rhythm section, trumpet, trombone, and saxophone. So I was filling in for the guys every once in a while because the band works seven days a week. So I would fill in occasionally. And of course, that all got shut down. My last job there was March 12th or something like that. I forget exactly. So they've been shut down for four months. So lo and behold, I got a phone call that said, they want to take that orchestra that's at the hotel, since the hotel's not up and running yet, put the orchestra in Hollywood Studios. So we are at Hollywood Studios in the theater where Beauty and the Beast was previously playing, and we're doing a little show called Disney Society Orchestra and Friends. It's cute. It's a little show with some Beauty and the Beast characters. So it gives the band a little bit of a feature up front, and then the characters join in. So it's a nice little show. So give us a little inside peek. So what's your day like? It just, is there just like one or two shows or how many times are you performing throughout the day? We actually do nine shows. We start at 1115 and the show is 17 minutes. So it's doable. You can do one at 1115, then 12 noon and one o'clock and so forth. So it's stretched out from 1115 and the last show is 620. So it's a bit of a long day. I leave my house at 830 in the morning and come home at eight o'clock, but it's fun. I mean, just being on stage playing for audiences like that, it's just a really fun experience. That's wonderful. Well, today you shared some stuff with us here. And uh, since we all can't get out and see you at Hollywood Studios right away, uh, we get a chance to see and work with you through Zoom. Uh, what was the lesson that you have created for us to check out today? Yeah, so I was talking about when I got started and what how I have began learning with lesson books and technique books and, you know, the standard repertoire. And again, I was talking about how my teacher kind of made it fun. She said, bring in some of the pop music that you've had. So we started to do that. And I would, I mean, really, I just would love to do anything that had like a Pink Panther kind of, that kind of sound to it, or maybe Elephant Walk, or just kind of some fun riff. So I would learn all that kind of style, incorporate the jazz. Because in the beginning, jazz is kind of difficult. Like I was really not understanding the concept of you build a chord and you invert a chord and you major, minor, dominant. It got really advanced for me. So in the beginning, it was, learning the different songs by the different composers like Oscar Peterson and such. So once <clears throat> once you get like 14, 15 and I was in high school, then I joined that jazz band. Then I started to get a little bit more involved with say jazz improvisation. So that it's kind of a step-by-step -step process like classical is. You start with some of the easier pieces of classical music, progress to the harder Chopin ballades as you go along. Same with jazz. You start out with some of the basic songs um, and then you start progressing to chords and inversions and how to figure that out and then improv so it's a it's kind of a long process and of course we're still learning to this day i'll be learning forever i'm sure so we're going to share judy's lesson where she's sitting at her studio on the piano and then after that then we're going to show off some of those jazz chops with uh with a piece of music called joey spring by clifford brown and it's you part of the jazz trio can you tell me a little bit about this group there's a place in cb beach called uh, boulevard burgers and it's um, the, ba the bass player is the leader, Hiram is, uh, Hiram Hazley is the leader. And I believe it might've been Kenny Loomer on drums, if that's the video I'm thinking of. So um, Hiram's a great guy. He's had that gig for a long time. He's there every Sunday. And um, he has a few different piano players and a few different drummers that he kind of rotates in and out. And um, the first time I did the gig, I had never met him or Kenny before. So that was the first time of the game. I was like, oh man, these guys are really good. So I'm like, I gotta go home and practice and really keep my chops up because Joy Spring was one of the things that we had to do. So that was a fun gig and I've got I got a chance to do that quite a bit. That's wonderful. Well, we're so excited to have you join us. We're excited to have you as part of our education team. And although we can't work in person with you this year, it's great that we can uh, share your uh, love of music with our students and our audience uh, digitally. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you asked me to do it. I really appreciate it. It was our pleasure. Judy, thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Judy's a lot of fun, and you can tell that she feels comfortable having fun playing music in any genre, and that's important. Just give it a shot and enjoy what you're performing and playing. The Education Spotlight Series is brought to you by the Venice Symphony and by the donations from the 2020 Giving Challenge. All of our Education Spotlight Series can be found in the links below throughout June, July, and now the end of August. Hi everyone, I'm Judy Glover with the Venice Symphony. I'm gonna to talk to you today about some piano basics. I started piano when I was about nine years old. 
Um, we did have a piano. You can learn on a keyboard if you do not have a full, I have a grand piano here, but if you do not have a full size piano, you can learn on a keyboard. Um, the pattern of notes is gonna be the same, whether it's this grand piano or a small, smaller keyboard. I think the one main difference would be a keyboard may not be as touch sensitive as a piano. On the piano, you're gonna be able to play loud notes, soft notes, depending on the force that you hit it with. So if you are shopping for a keyboard, try to find one that is touch sensitive. So that would be the most likely action on a piano. Okay, so the basics, uh, nice straight posture, hands are nice and relaxed, and your arms, I like to keep them nice and straight like this. Um, wrists are very relaxed, and usually my hand position is kind of a relaxed feeling as if you're holding a tennis ball or a baseball or something in your hand, relax like that. Flip them over, and that's the nice roundness you want in your fingers, and you want to use your fingertips to play. Okay, so talking about some of the... Um, some of the other things that we talked about when I was learning uh, the, the instrument, different styles of music. Of course, in the lesson book at first, you're learning real basic songs, but eventually we try to um, get some classical things going on in popular music. I had a great teacher who really let me do a lot of different things. So uh, let's say that we got to the level of playing some Mozart. We would look at, say, maybe a Mozart sonata. Here's a little bit from Mozart Sonata and A, just to show you a little bit of the louds and the softs and everything that the piano can do. play because you're playing you're playing melodies you're playing rhythm you're playing harmony you have the best of everything you can sit down and play beautiful pieces it's not like where you just have a single melody line an instrument that sometimes needs an accompaniment you can play millions of songs on the piano so that was one of the things that we had done and that came from a Mozart book as I was saying I kind of would collect different books as I was learning so this is a little little bit of Mozart in the entire book, some excerpts and different sonatas and things. And then my teacher let me bring in, say, popular music. So this book here is loaded with popular songs, songs from the movies, songs from TV, uh, kind of fun things to play. So one of the things that I kind of thought was cool was this Baby Elephant Walk by Henry Mancini, and I love this. As a kid, that was kind of fun. So the difficulty is kind of putting your hands together, but with practice, that when I was 11 or 12 something like that um, and then the other thing that I brought in I started to get interested in jazz with my older brother who plays trumpet and he introduced me to a lot of different jazz composers and artists Oscar Peterson is a fantastic pianist from Toronto and he has this book out uh, again I've had this for a long time but it has exercises and minuets and different things to kind of get your ear trained a little bit more to the sound of the jazz chords as opposed to what you hear in classical music and maybe some of the jazz technique that he would incorporate. So exercises, minuets, I'll show you a little bit of the exercise and then a minuet that kind of goes with it. of that exercise and created a minuet a little bit more happening maybe in the left hand and the right hand together kind of like um something you might see Bach do where you have uh, a line in the right a line in the left put together and then a little bit of harmony toward the end
kind of a fun sounding thing to do. And then later on in the book, it got a little bit more involved with some bigger notes and bigger movements. And so this one sounds like this. Oscar Peterson. So have fun with the piano, whatever you decide to learn. There's millions of pieces of music out there from the old classics, the old masters, jazz, popular show music. You just, you'll never run out of things to learn. I'm constantly playing new pieces of music and learning new things. And it's fantastic to be able to play with uh, the orchestra and other musicians. But in this downtime of not being able to play together, we're all at home practicing. So I just wanted to share a little bit about the piano with you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.